Hello, welcome back. It's Teresa here from just outside London. Um, today we're going to start making a little bag or purse like this. And our inspiration is going to, to be taken from a magazine, in fact this magazine. And we're going to reduce some flowers to the basic geometric shape of circles. I want to just undo this so you can see a better picture so this is what we're going to be working on fully lined as well and functional but before we actually make a start on that I've got some housekeeping to do and I'm going to say hello to some new people and to some now regular people big hello to Kathy Hewitt Hanny Ram Remy, Ninja or Ning, Ninga Graham and I'm really sorry if I've mispronounced that, Georgia Piazza, Carol Lewis, Jenny Sutton, blessings to you Jenny and thank you for a very nice comment, Surface of Beauty, Kathy Spaulding, Cynthia Black, Cynthia I'm so pleased that you approved of the Frida project because that really was all down to you that was a comment that you made married with something I was already researching and um, you were actually the push the push I needed so thank you for that Cynthia because the, the um, response has been really really wonderful all praise to you Cynthia Chris Jerger Hello Chris, Patricia C. Clark, a fellow art teacher, Patricia, Teresa Singranelle, hello Therese, um, I always look forward to your comments as well as everybody else's and yes we will definitely have tea at the Met, Marcy J. Lo Vallum, I'm pleased that you enjoyed the Frida tutorial Marcy and thank you for your comment, Maureen Deacon, you mentioned that you have a slight problem with your sewing and that you felt that um, by me saying no right or wrong it was really freeing and I really appreciate that comment and I just think that's lovely the Scarlet Owls I think that is a wonderful name welcome Diamonds another lovely name welcome to you too Glenn Leader, hello Glenn again, um, I had to laugh with your comment on Frida that you think she and I would have a lot in common, um, please read about her personal life, the only thing that Frida and I have in common is our facial hair and our uni brows, so um, and that did make me laugh, that really made me laugh, but anyway Glenn thank you for commenting, hello Raina, Raina Sean, and I'm pleased to hear that the stitching is impacting on the movement in your fingers. I think that's wonderful. I did teach in therapeutic education for many years and I do know that practice, uh, it does actually make perfect and that goes for helping with um, uh, physical impairments to your fine motor control. It does actually help. So well done Raina, please keep me posted on that. Welcome to Sandra or Sandra Ives. Hawks Roost book. Now I hope I've pronounced that properly, but that is wonderful. And is that roost or have I mis I've mispronounced that? Paula G, welcome. Sharan Simpson, Christina Lothman. Um, I'm pleased to see that you're still working on the journal from last year, and you're now at page four. Well done for carrying on with that because that really is a marathon task, and I'm enjoying your update, Christina. Good luck with the rest of it. <laughs> Believe me, I needed the good luck when I was doing it. Kent Duncan, thank you for your comment as well. And I did actually take your suggestion up and I did look at smazoos.com about promoting the channel. Thank you for that very much. Deborah Detour and Bitter Spice One, welcome. Now we're at Kath Avalon. Hello, Kath. Always nice to hear from you too. And I laughed at your comment when you said your boys were watching Miss impossible and you had your earplugs in while you were doing your sewing I could just see that I've had young children too I'm assuming your children are young I hope they're not in their 20s and their 30s <laughs> But yeah, um, I've had young children too and I've done all sorts of similar things. So that did make me laugh. Hello to Pam Frank. 
Thank you for your comments. The same with Creative Divisions and Joan Smith. Frida Watson. Anna, you're new, Frida. You should have joined us with the last project we looked at the work of Frida Kahlo. So, um, welcome, Frida, anyway. Azu Carblanca. Gloria Orozco. Very nice names there. Terzerin Cole. Terzerin, you mentioned about uh, having a shop and putting fabrics in there. Yes, I have got an Etsy shop and I haven't stocked it yet but as always Tersarin it's nice to hear from you I'm never sure whether I pronounce your name properly but um, yeah it's something I have thought of I have lots of fabrics here that I could easily do that with watch this space Tersarin Railing hello Ref Ruginini um, I hope I pronounced that properly and you mentioned the cocoa dyed paper I'm so pleased that some of you are still doing the cocoa dyed paper it's a lovely thing to do carol bogdan or bogdan and you said that you feel that i'm talking to each of you well actually i do have a mental image in my head of a friend and when i do this i'm i actually feel that i'm talking to that friend so it's funny you should pick up on that um angie angie ratui rahui uh, you did the sewing tool roll inspired by Russo. Thank you for your comment. I'd like to know if you've actually tried it yet. Now at the moment, that is where we are with the new people. And welcome to you all. It's lovely to have your comments. And to my old people, thank you for coming back and supporting. So on that note, we're going to move on. Coffee time, maybe a biscuit, sit and I hope you enjoy. This is our inspiration for design. It's from a local nursery from the catalogue. I was lucky enough to get two, one through the post and I actually picked up one uh, from the nursery itself. And we're going to use this page here together with this page same pages the flowers are petunias and they're very very lovely so we're going to use these and what i'm going to do first i'm going to match these two i shall cut the two out and join them like so we have bigger area to work with these two halves here match if I push them together they, they could match and form one complete flower so this will be our inspiration this particular piece here I will join that and then photocopy it make it easier to work from we're not actually going to use the flower in their naturalistic form as you see them here with the petals we're going to reduce the shape to its basic geometric shape which is the circle they're very circular so the petals and the dips here will be rounded off into circles now you might think well why not just use circles anyway we're not just going to use the circles anyway because we want to be inspired by the total picture the picture in its totality if you like we want to be inspired by the light and the dark areas you've got dark areas here light there we want to be inspired by the colour, the bright colour, the white, which sticks out from the deep red and almost the black of the centre against the dark colours here. Also, we want to be guided or inspired by the size of the shape. We have large shapes here, lovely big large shapes, against the smaller shapes here. If you see that now don't forget these are design principles the contrast between light and dark color and shape so this will form the basis of our design now I'm just going to show you something now this is from my notebook my sketchbook if you like now these are not flowers but this is similar to what we will be doing with our flowers now this came from a cluster of fossils now it's a fossil formation and it's very very similar if you look now this was done some years ago but it is very similar to this to the petunias here if you can see we have areas of light and dark here like this 
and even the lines on the fossils here I like the lines here on the flowers so this was the actual what I say was taken directly from a cluster of fossils and from that there were several processes as you know now um, the development of an idea so there were several bits in between from that to this this is the photocopied version of the, the photographs or the pictures and what I did I've enhanced it slightly by making it larger and also playing around with the colour on the printer to pick out the areas of dark and light and it just highlights the areas that I think I might keep dark and I might have light now it is a lot bigger so I'm not sure about the size I think the size might be too big for what I'm going to do with it now from there I managed to find a dish that is the size I want so all I'm going to do a nice strong piece of card it actually had some sort of Indian wraps in them now and a draw around it now make sure that your piece of card has a border on it like this and like this this is too narrow for what we want the, to use this bit for because we don't want to throw this bit we want to keep that and you'll see why later this is seven and a half inches in diameter which for my purpose is ideal you might want to make one smaller or one larger it's entirely up to you this will be cut out keep this bit the bit around the edge we want this frame but this is the piece we're going to work on for the time being now for me that's just perfect I'm just going to put that out of the way I sellotape them together that is double sided tape it's holding them together so I found another magazine I actually had three of them it was just as well because I needed the third one I placed this over there it's quite evident what I did cut, drew around it and cut it out so this will be that part this will form the back of the bag here and the flap which means we're missing this piece so I've made another shape here and then cut out the same shape from the third magazine magazine I found which was just a little bit short so I've had to add a piece from this here and that really doesn't matter you don't have to do it this way you could do it in newspaper if you like but this will give you an idea of how the bag is constructed so we have the front piece here the flap that goes over the pocket and that will be the back so it's quite a neat shape I'm going to put that to one side and show you the fabric that I have already decided on this is what I'm going to use as the background fabric and I went through my stash my odds and ends and the rag bag and I immediately went for these colors and I thought no I'd already said previously that I was going to change the colors I have decided on these colors so now, let's go back to here now I want I don't think I'm going to get I might not oh possibly possibly they both fit on there but I do have enough for that piece anyway so I'm going to put this here normally I would say take a shape and to save fabric stick it on the edge you don't want any waste but in this instance I'm going to say keep a nice border around your circle because this will make it easier to sew and to construct later after you've done your sewing is the time when you will cut out your sewing from around here 
and by doing it this way it makes it so much easier to sew when you're not worried about the edges all the time so if you can manage to keep a border maybe narrower than that all the way around that'd be wonderful not only that you do need a little bit to play with for a seam allowance so this is ideal for what I want it for so that is going to go there so there's the frame from our template you see it's perfect now I have as I said I've sorted through and I found this and this is absolutely gorgeous absolutely beautiful and there's pieces missing here this is all I have oh, I have a, a tiny bit more which I'm hoping will be enough for this piece here but I have a feeling it might not be but I'll worry about that later so I'm going to put this down on there I mean that looks good enough to leave doesn't it as it is that is what we're going to do to see what pieces we actually want now with these pieces I'm going to put them under these holy bits we're going to put them like that and you can put any pieces at all under there that you want you do it your way don't forget there's no right and there's no wrong so that's it just going to see what that effect is so we have I love this effect where am I here don't like that bit don't like that bit at all but I love these tiny bits that are coming out look as blue and little bits of red now let's see and the original background so we have the contrast here already between the dark areas peeping through here and the light areas and the lovely bold colors here the bright colors against once again the not so bright the background now this is going to go over there and that's how I'm going to decide oh I love that that piece there look at that lovely red area there I think it needs just some more dark blue showing no 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 so let's back to the drawing board and let's try them again I don't want to introduce too many colors here I think just the two will be fine um, I'll just play around with these a bit let's put that there let's put that one there and then we just put that there let's see what we get now and there is a right and a wrong way to this lace the right way is quite textured right let's have a look here I did want a large area of dark blue ah so here we've got areas of dark blue I quite like that big area there now this is beginning to look right yeah that is it exactly I think yeah I like that I like that so this is all I'm going to do when it's time to put to use these down I'm actually working out a sequence here I've just realized so this is the idea and that is what you're going to get on your purse or your bag that bit there now it's still too bright it's too bright for me because don't forget we're actually going to be putting small circles on this that's just too bright at the moment so I've got some black net in here back net and what I'll do I'm going to cover up the piece I want like this there now that just tones down the brightness because I don't want the background too bright because it will fight for attention with the, with the circles that we're going to apply on top now that's fine that's lovely unfortunately <laughs> unfortunately because I worked out a sequence normally if I wasn't filming this I would just pin that but I'm not going to do that 
what I'm going to do is admit defeat, admit that I've worked out a sequence, move that along. But that is how to do it. That's what we're going to do. Now, we're going to find the back, which this is. That's actually the back. It doesn't actually matter too much, although the front is shiny. So that's the front. Now, on the back, as we normally do in our projects, going to put some calico around there for strength. Um, because it's a purse, it needs to be just a bit stronger. Although this is a lovely strong fabric. Now I've already ironed the violin, the interfacing, onto the two shapes. There we go. That one there. And this one here. So this one we can put to one side because we're not going to be using this for quite a while yet. So let's just stick that over there. Now as you can see on this, on the calico here as well, I've left a border around here so if you can spare the calico then that will be ideal to leave that as well to make it easier to sew it's going to give a nice firmness to this now what I will do I'm going to pin this in place all the way around here to hold it firm and then we need to define the area of the circle, the perimeter of the circle. So I'm going to pin this, hold it securely. You might need more pins. You might not need any pins at all. I think I just had a couple more pins here. Oh, oh my goodness, look at that pin. It's completely bent. <laughs> oh dear me goodness only knows what I was doing with that one and there now to get the circle on this side the front side what I'm going to do is just tack all the way around the edge just a single piece of tacking thread not not in the end and just tack around here don't worry about the size of your stitches how neat they are that's not the issue however if you can manage to get your stitches along the circle you'll keep that nice round shape so I will carry on you don't need to see me do this because it's now I'm mind bogglingly boring and you've seen it all before so I shall carry on and tack all the way around there we'll just turn it over there you go already you can see the edge and we will end up with a nice circular shape Yay. so oh, the tacking yeah. has now been completed all the way around the circle and if we turn it over there it is you can see it better that way so we're not going to work outside of the circle let's just have a look you see exact it's come out really well so the tacking's done the next thing i did i cut up these pieces into smaller pieces i felt they were too big now to be contained in the circle they were sticking out they were too long so I've cut them out a lot smaller and I'm just going to pop them down oh that one's still a bit big I might have to end up cutting a bit of that put that there and we'll have some more red here and maybe something here but I do want an area of dark blue showing through let's see how that looks and I've also trimmed the lace to just outside the circle um, that's the right side really doesn't matter right let's have a look right I can still see the outline of the circle let's have a look you know it's easier to look on the screen for the effect than it is 
to look down at the table. Ah, now we've got some nice big areas here, nice areas of red, red here again, and some nice areas of blue. Now we've got some navy blue there. I think I wanted a bit more navy really. Let's just move this red slightly. Oh, that's that's it. Right, what do you think of that? We've got some. Let's pull that over there a little way. Let's have a look there. Oh, I'm tempted to say that's okay. That's okay. Let's move the lace around just a little bit. Make sure that's the look. Come on. Alright, what is that like on the screen? Hmm. I'm not sure about this bit here. No, I'm not happy with that. Oh, that's better. That's better. So we have nice dark blue there. We have areas here. Need to pull that blue up there. Yes, some blue there. Let me have a look on the screen. Yes, I'm keeping that one. Let's just have a look there. Ah, oh, yes. Yeah. Can you see the difference it makes by framing it? When you take away the edges and you look at just what you want, it takes on a different look completely, doesn't it? So that's looking good at the moment. To tone it all down, we're going to put the net over, making sure I can still see this circle right the way around there. Yeah, it's still it's still in eyesight. So let's have a look. Yes, I think it's toned it down more here than it has on the screen let me just see what it would look like with two pieces of that oh no 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 oh it looks better on the screen than it does here now no it hides too much of the red and the blue yes that will do that will do so let's get that pin down I'm going to pin this down put the pins in any any way that suits you we're not using the sewing machine so we don't have to avoid any sewing machine um, feet we're not going to break any needles so you just put the needle the pins in how best you want to put them in oh look another bent one what's going on here good grief and these ones are for bridal dresses these beautiful ones I don't know how they're for bridal um, dresses, um, dressmaking, because they're so thick. And I, I'm sure they would leave holes in silk and satin. I mean, they're hard enough to get through this. That one won't even go through. Let's go back to the old cheap ones. There we go. Straight through first time. Not actually going to, to tack all around the shapes and all around the pieces we're going to do it in rows but also just going to go around the outside again here wasn't actually going to do it this way but it's a work in progress progression of an idea so I'm going to do the tacking all the way around the edge again and then when I finish now imagine that I've just finished this when I finished I'm going to come through to the front I've actually gone through a piece there that I didn't want to so when I finished I'm going to come through now as I said imagine all that circle has been tacked again we don't actually have to do this but um, I feel happier doing it this way and then just the big stitches just clipping each piece of fabric and they can be really big all you're going to do is just clip these pieces of fabric in place so they don't move when you sew them now don't to do as many lines as we normally do because we haven't got that many pieces to hold in place so I'm thinking just 
there, maybe there, and down here. And I think that should do it. You can, of course, always add another line or two if you find it moves. Might even do it down there. One more here. Yes, I think I might put one here. And then I'll go down there. And that will definitely be held in place with this tacking round there, down there, and across there. I'm going to carry on with that and I'll get back to you shortly. This is the back and it's just showing you how I tacked. So I did tack all the way around the edge of the circle and across, did a cross there. And that was the first line I put in. But I decided I didn't need more than the cross there to hold it in place. So that's showing you it on the back and the front. There we go. Now the circle has come out really well here and I have two circles I have the one the red one here oh for some reason I can't see it there oh because I haven't actually finished tacking it there that's why <laughs> but, but you can see it here all the way around there and slightly the yellow thread underneath now I'm going to leave this piece here all these pieces here that are outside the circle I'm going to leave and they'll be trimmed off later so unless they really annoy you um, leave them if they do annoy you just trim back within about half an inch of the edge of the circle okay just in case you need something to play with later I might actually trim this off as well because that might be a bit bulky I've left some pins in place just to hold down the bits that are likely to flap about and I can see this bit will as well so I should pop that a pin there now the next thing I'm going to look at are the flowers so the flowers are going to be reduced to the geometric shape of circles as you know so here they all are in them um, nicely formed natural natural sort of rhythm going on here the way they're falling now I looked at them and I thought right contrast we're designing so we need contrast we need the large flowers against the small now when you're designing try not to have any mediocre in between shapes you either want large or small but not medium so this is ideal because these flowers are large and small. However, when you look at them in the garden centre, they all look the same. So I thought at first we'll have a big shape against the small one. And um, we want that flow. Well, it didn't take long to realise, oh no, that's far too big. Far too big. So got rid of those that size. Same thing happened with um, another size here. These. No, mediocre. No, not at all the look I'm looking for. So I played around and played around. And I went back to the magazine. And in the magazine, it was peppered with little advertisements and little pictures in circles so we have a, a big one and a small one nothing in between nothing mediocre so these are the sizes i'm going to stick to i i'm going to be inspired by this obviously that's what we're about being inspired and motivated i should do some overlapping but for the time being all i'm going to concentrate on now the colours I'm going to use. These were these were all um, donated, like everything else, and they're all cut. They're all samples. That is why they're the same size. <laughs> they're the same size, and the edges are all being treated the same way. Now we already have the red and the blue in the background, and at this stage, I'm not sure whether to carry the red and the blue, slightly muted, as opposed to the bright red. And now introduce another colour, maybe green. Oh, green, yeah. 
maybe some greens might oh i think that might work really wasn't going to do gr use green um preferring the reds the pinks oh yeah that's um that is now interesting these two greens are too too much alike so i would only use one of those and i think i'd go for the darker one and the very dark very dark darker and maybe the light so i'm going to play around with this for a while and then um, i don't think it's going to be an easy task so as soon as i've made a decision i will start cutting out the circles if i'm going to use this i shall cover the back of this in iron on violin interfacing and then once that's nice and stiff with the facing on the back then i'll cut out the circles so when i cut the circles out they're already nicely interfaced on the back i cut out some circles for the flowers and i've done them in various colors well not various really but three they've all been interfaced with iron on violin and these were the colors that i chose i had placed them on on this in keeping with the natural flow of what's on the picture and if you can see this gorgeous natural flow here it comes round and then it comes this way and it's just lovely nice gentle flow and that is what i wanted on here however it just didn't look right and i just can't make up my mind what the problem was so i used the contrast the large against the small and then i used some greens um did exactly the same and i just couldn't i just couldn't work out what was wrong and i thought oh i really have made a mistake with this perhaps i needed to keep them flower shape but i've committed to doing them as circles now so i just spent some time looking at this and i thought oh yeah i really love these colors here and so naturally i have gone back to this color now i've cut all these out and i think these are the color this is the color i should say that i'm going to use because it marries with the background here and we know by this color and this color together that it works so this color should naturally work with the blue there and with the dark blue that's peeking out from different areas i'm going to try and keep it as i said a natural flow and i have sat and played about with it i'm not totally in love with it but as we've already mentioned therese <laughs> this is the rubbish stage and you feel oh my goodness being dramatic in the and in a Shakespearean voice, to bin or not to bin. But I've decided, no, no, we don't do stuff like that. We're going to plow on. So the contrast in sizes. Oh, that actually looks better on the screen than it does here. This is giving the effect at the moment of, of poppies. If I put green stems down here and black centers, it would almost look like poppies so watch this space goodness knows what we're going to end up with might not be anything like this uh, uh, you know, oh, I'm, I'm really puzzled now myself i'm looking at the screen thinking i think as with everything else i'm just going to let it evolve itself i've been inspired by this strangely enough i've even gone back to the original color so that was the inspiration just going to let this evolve now naturally and it will be quite interesting to see what's going to happen after seeing it on the screen and saying oh look poppies that could be one way forward now before i carry on with this oh look the violins come off that one when you cut out your circles don't throw the fabric that you've cut your circles from you see these the circles fit in there cut them out there and i've been left with these shapes these shapes and the same in green you see the big green one there so i've been left with green 
yellow and what was that a dark green as well now why I'm saying don't throw those because you never know you might actually need these you see for instance the yellow there is that come I'll, I'll change that color because it's not looking too bright on the screen if we were to cut where's my scissors if we were just to cut along here that's very roughly then we can use that and maybe as a flower center so until we actually finish our piece of work don't throw anything that and then we could build on that with something like this maybe not for this piece of work that we're doing at the moment but certainly for something else um, and you imagine we could put a sequin there or a bead slow stitch around it we could put some maybe um, leaves actually we could even cut something like this this is just sort of thinking off the top of my head and it's probably making no sense whatsoever that actually is resembling a holly leaf so you could play around with it and see what you get so anyway anyway that's um i'm now getting lost in the realms of fantasy so keep those bits now i'm going to carry on and place these pieces just to see what i come up with the circles have now been placed and i've tacked through them now as before in previous projects all i've done is just tack through each one there's no need to tack right the way around it because it would take too long so as long as you clip each piece of fabric you'll be fine and it is just to hold it in place looking on the screen i can already see that there's there's too much of a gap around here so i'm going to place those two there i think just to get more of a composition all the way round so that that joins it all together and it's quite easy on the eye so I'm going to pin those first and then I should tack through them oh gosh that's <laughs> wow that's tough <gasps> I don't know if it's the fabric or the, the pins so I'll keep those there let's just pop that over and look at the screen yes I like that effect yes I like that these pieces of green here are from the bits the these pieces here that I said keep just in case you need them later on I'm still not going to throw these because they might come in handy yet my next task is to sew these in place to think about stitches and to think about colors now I'm going to use on some of this some net some black net just to give it a little bit more texture a little bit of depth to tone down the brightness of some of the colors I hooked that out as well but no I don't think so not that one I think I might keep to um, to black so I might just put these pieces in different places as you can see to give a little bit of depth now I have thought about the stitches and at the moment I'm thinking of working the circles in pinwheel that these circles are suggesting pinwheels it's just a thought and as you know I do tend to change my mind as, as the work grows and slow stitch in these these gaps a nice flow of slow stitch not sure about the color of the thread I think I might like to bring that blue that nice blue forward to the front and maybe add some gold because I think the gold will go very nicely with these deep rich colors so that is where I am at the moment um, I did find this as well as I lifted up those pieces 
and I'm desperate to put this shape somewhere. So, <laughs> so um, I might stick that shape somewhere. Oh, that looks quite good there, doesn't it? So next time you see this, that little moon shape could be sitting in there somewhere. Hmm. Yeah, I like that shape. Anyway, I'm going off now and I'm going to start um, playing around with places to put this. I might have to cut these up into smaller pieces. Um, yeah, that, that's quite a nice look. But yeah, I will cut these up into nice pieces. Um, sorry, smaller pieces. And from there on, I'll decide how the stitches are going to work out. So just watch this space and I'll be back shortly. I've just cut out some circles, the size of the large ones here. I've cut them out in net and I'm just going to show you very quickly what I intend to do at this point. And with these circles of net, I'm going to place them over some of the areas on the background I've also sorted out the fab um, some thread and I'm going to use these um, like muted colors as well they're not not so bright as other colors so I've got that and I've got this um, and I've got a real pile here of messy colors so these at the moment I'm intending to use those I'm going to start with the pinwheels now what I will do is to mute those colours slightly and they might necessarily not be placed in this particular way but it's just to give you an idea first of all I should tack these black circles in place just to hold them down and then I'll start with the pinwheels and I will do the pinwheels the same size or the same shape as these large ones I'll go over the large ones so in some areas when I do well most of areas when I do the pinwheels I will be going over the net as well as the whole of the large coloured shape so that would be quite interesting to see what result we get so I'm going to start that now and hopefully that won't take too long I think it's going to be quite a nice thing to do as well a small update now just to show you how far I've got I've started doing the pinwheels for the flower heads and I haven't got very far actually just around here and a few there but I wanted you to see how it looks as it progresses it still looks rubbish it's still in that rubbish oh shall I be in it stage from there down but up here, it's taking on a very different look. So this is what um, we spoke about going back quite a while now. That please don't bin your work when you get to the rubbish stage and you think, oh my goodness, that looks awful. Not even going to try. Going to rubbish it, bin it and start again. I've got two things going on here. Quite a nice top bit there. And then this horrible piece. Just bear with me for a while and you'll be able to see, especially the new people, how it progresses from this to that. These are the pinwheels here. This one here, well they're all overlap, but we'll just look at this one. This one is the original shape, the original burgundy red shape here with some netting. A piece of net the same size the same size as the circle placed like that just so if you can see that it's placed if I put it on the white you might see it better it's placed just over the red the red circle but not matching the edge I have just dropped it down slightly so the whole circle is like that now some of them there's some overlapping going on so I have some red showing here but this edge of the circle is on the rim the edge of the the lace not yeah the lace we call that and then on top of this I've placed one of the smaller circles it is actually yellow here and covered that with 
some netting I have ended up with one two three shapes there are three shapes going on there mostly because I've used the net which has produced a lovely shape and some shading all of its own and that is how these have come about by using the net and some smaller shapes and overlapping so these shapes are all the result of just overlapping but if you think back to the flowers on that photograph they were all overlapping they weren't all side by side so I think that is a nice organic look I'm just going to show you how quickly how to do these pinwheels I've started off by drawing a circle here now I've used this just an empty cotton reel I wonder how many of you can actually remember these the Silco do you remember these all I've done put it on there and I drew around it now it's okay to draw around this in pen on something like this which won't be washed as purely for decoration but please if you're doing this on satin silk fabric something really really um, important please don't use pen there are special crayons to use and special ways of marking um, like satins fabrics that that are very special and you don't want to mark not only that if you were to use a pen even on a darker color on, on a piece of dressmaking um, when you wash it the pen is likely to run and bleed through to your colors to your fabrics so please I'm using a pen only because this won't be washed for this I'm going to start on the edge here now I'm sitting at an angle so please bear with me while I do this I have to twist and turn so a nice knot and once again I'm only using the big needle with the large eye and the thick wool for demonstration purposes because if I were to actually do one of these very fine pinwheels on the screen you wouldn't see it and it would just be a mass of fingers and a needle so it's easy to do this way and then you'll you'll get an idea of what I'm doing right so the thread up there now we're going to take this into the center now some of these are off center deliberately to give a nice nice interest and with the satin threads when the light catches it you get a nice play of light into the center there keep that up there and then you see that's at the side you're going to come back onto the line here at the side so you have this nice loop around the needle back in to the starts and then pull it right that's your first spoke can you see that then we're going to do it again thread up there down into the same hole the center keep the thumb on that and then it won't get too tight and then another one you see the threads there and the needles come up in between and pull it another one round there into the center up back onto the line keeping your needle at an angle and pull it now as you can see that when you do this you're going to get faster the more confident you get the quicker you'll get and all you'll do is that all the way round so until then I should carry on and I'll be back very here's the finished piece now all the circles have been held down to the back on the background with um, the pinwheels and um, there's quite a lot of overlapping and I think that gives a nice um, dimension to it <clears throat> the black circles were overlaid and they've been secured in place as well this 
this one looks a little bit alone there so I'm not quite sure whether that that one is finished or not I might leave it like that I might hang this up for a while and then decide whether I need to do something with this little fella here now these green bits here will be secured to the background when it's time to slow stitch this is going to be slow stitched all the way round so that task will be coming up shortly but before then I think I think I'm almost sure I've decided to outline these in a darker color the same color around them all just to unite them together just to to bind them to make a better pleasing a more pleasing composition by as i say really just by uniting them with a common color a dark color all the way around and then i shall think about the slow stitch at the moment these areas are still standing out and they're quite prominent you see the red of the background here and there and we have the blue poking through here and here I'd really like to keep those so that will be um, sort of thought about later when it comes to t time to slow stitch it so for now on I'm just going to outline these I'm not actually sure what stitch to use I might use a blanket stitch which is the stitch we've just done only much shorter tiny tiny short one I might use that or I might do a chain stitch who knows I don't even know but when I get back to you I'll have made a decision and you can see the finished piece so won't be long right I've just finished doing the circles and I think they're looking more like flowers than circles now so we've come full circle back to the flower stage I'm just going to show you how to do these pieces here and here where you have a full pinwheel oh, that's a good example as well a full pinwheel and then a little bit of overlapping we've got two pieces there of overlapping it's quite easy and it's the same stitch that you've used for the pinwheel so once again a big needle thick cotton just so that you can see what I'm doing now this would be this here would be one of these pieces here just jutting out from the circle so if you see that's just jutting out from the circle here from the pinwheel all I'm going to do is pop it here and you can see it's now jutting out from the circle there or oh, I'll move that round a little bit and as you can see it's the same effect just a little bit of it showing around the circle like it is here just showing around the circle as I said the stitch is exactly the same so bring your needle in from the back and what you're going to do is just the same thing hold that with your thumb hold that down with your thumb in to the bottom here of the, the piece that you're going to overlay or overlap the piece that's jutting out and we're going up there the same way and we're going to pull it so there you go first stitch thread over again hold it down hold it down there in here as far as you want it spaced and then up here oh I think I'm a bit too close to the edge and in, in there now the only difference is with these because it's just a piece showing like this just a little bit jutting out like this there's no center piece for you to take the thread into so there's no center piece here so just do them a space space them just like you want to there you go and that is the effect on the pieces that are sticking out such a nice thing to do blanket stitch this is the blanket stitch we have done this before 
and it's probably on some of the this stitch has probably been demonstrated on some of the other videos but there you go and it's a bit scruffy there because I've run <laughs> I run out of fabric so that is how you do the pieces here no secret to doing it and there it is I've also started doing the slow stitch on the green pieces this one's finished um, so is this one this one I haven't finished just so I can show you now I'm not going to demonstrate this, the slow stitch because it really is just an ordinary running stitch um, like a tacking a big uh, tacking stitch is just a big version of it and can you see that there so all we're doing is just literally running along like that picking it up no no secrets no big shakes simple as that and I should just follow the contours all the way round until I fill that in as much as I want to so the next thing I'm going to do after I finish that is start the, the slow stitching around these shapes now I've just been out to um, a big high street shop craft shop and I bought some beads oh my goodness they were quite expensive as, as well I was a bit shocked <laughs> I bought some beads I have lots of beads but not the ones that I've made my mind up to use on this and I'm, I think I might just scatter some beads around here as well that's another idea that's just a, an, uh, an idea that I'm working on but until then I shall carry on slow stitching around Contrast. these shapes I've Keeping. added the slow stitch here and here and here I'm sure you can see the areas of slow stitch now done the blanket stitch around here I think I mentioned that before only highlighted some of the shapes in black um, blanket stitch I've got really dense areas here and on the green pieces thick um, areas here and here but around this lovely shape here I've just done one row and that is for the contrast between the solid areas and the less solid so that is one of our design principles the solid the mass against the oh what should I say the less busy area should I say I've also added some herringbone stitch here here and here but I abandoned that because it doesn't seem to make much difference um, close up it just has a little bit of dimension but I just felt that I was wasting my time so moved on now if you look closely at the pinwheels I'm just going to lift this up slightly right if you can look closely at the pinwheels I'm just going to move it about a little bit so it catches the light through the spokes between the spokes I should say I've added metallic thread straight stitch between all the spokes there's metallic thread now I didn't actually have any I found in my stash look this now if I move that around you can see there's a silver thread in there and I thought I know what I'm going to do I took out all the silver well some of the silver threads now you can see how long they are it was quite tedious each spoke took two to three of these pieces my daughter came in and she said oh what on earth are you doing and she said hang on a minute mum <laughs> And she said, is this any good? Oh my goodness. As she produced this gold here. So that is why some are gold and the rest are silver. But I think it works really well. So I did this in straight stitch between the spokes. It's straight stitch. And then I looked at it and thought, oh, something's missing. The progression of an idea, one thing leading to another. We never know with the progression of an idea where we're going where it's going to lead to well it's actually led me back to this so we've gone from the naturalistic flowers to the geometric shape of the circles and strangely enough we've ended back at the flowers I'm going to show you how to put the 
the sequins on and as I say we have done this before but let's start with the herringbone stitch in case any of you would like to add the herringbone stitch to your sewing and it's really really easy do it your way if you're left handed you'll do it one way if you're right handed you'll do it another way so all you're going to do into your fabric like this and it's like an elongated cross so you're going to take it over here bearing in mind I'm exaggerating the stitch so you can see it pick up a little piece like this okay see easy peasy little piece like that and pull it so it's the first leg there first leg of your herringbone then you'll cross it here and you're going to do basically the same here there you go see how easy that is it's very difficult to I'm doing this sideways again so um it's very difficult sometimes to get the sequence right so here see look there's no secret at all to herringbone and this is possibly my favorite stitch I probably say that a lot with all the stitches there you go oops we keep the needle that way and this is a great stitch for adding texture you don't have to keep them all the same size you can make them fat thin you can drop them down here you do what you want to do you're going to tell it what to do so we stick that over there now the spokes the straight stitch this is so easy right there's our demonstration pinwheel just come up you don't have to come up from the middle even make sure you don't pull the, the knot through like that and it's as it sounds straight stitch along there in there there you go I'll lift that up in there here and there you do it that way doesn't matter if you come up through the bottom of the gap or the top who cares no one's going to see the back of your work only you and that is your straight stitch see how easy that is and it gives such a nice effect and you just carry on doing that all the way round so that is your straight stitch you could even I haven't done this on um, this piece of work but you could even go up there and do that all the way round between the gaps here don't forget that arc there are these arcs round here there we go it's a straight stitch I'm going to lift that up a bit not particularly neat but I'm sure you've got the gist of that now that's the two stitches the sequin the sequins here some of them are flowers um, it looks like a star and the others are just regular sequins of different sizes to add interest so once again I'm exaggerating with the needle and the thread there's your sequin you're going to hold the sequin like, down like that and you're going to come through the middle there are many ways of doing this the main thing is you come through the middle at some point over the side like that now you can go back through the middle like that and there's your sequin okay if you have a big sequin or a shaped sequin like this this is a flower this one there's a couple of flowers oh that one might be better there's a couple of flowers there so they're shaped they have they have petals now when you've got something that needs a little bit of holding down imagine their petals there you would just repeat this only on the cross to make a cross there like that now you can come through there again and do the other one which I prefer doing or you can go straight over there which I think wastes a bit of thread but it's up to you down there 
you see how neat that looks that probably looks neater than any of my sequins that I've got on the work so there you go and that's how to put a sequin on so you're just going to turn in the back secure it firmly so it doesn't come undone because you don't want your sequins coming undone and oops and then you would just imagine that hasn't come out there and you would knot it and there you go done dusted sequin I'm just going to show you how to put the beads on once again I'm exaggerating the size of everything just so you can see see what I'm doing a nice strong thread with a knot in the back in from the background where you want your your beads now I will go in twice so just to make sure that that thread is secure and just pull it there you go so that thread is now secure it's not going anywhere can't pull that out all you're going to do now is take your bead make sure your needle is a nice size to go through your bead and you're going to secure it so just lie the bead flat and take your thread in the needle in at the end of your bead and there you go that's your first bead now if that was going to be a single bead you would then turn your work over and secure it here okay so you would knot it there and make sure that is really really tight now what I recommend that you do is what I actually do if it's going to be a single bead go back go back through it and that will make sure that bead is completely secure so then I would go back in there and secure it at the back okay now if you were going to do a whole string of beads say you wanted a line of beads here what I would do right so I come through start like we started for this one come through the back so you've knotted you've got a knot here now and you're coming through the back and then I would pick up say I wanted a quite a string I pick up maybe three no I'd pick up more than three. Oh, I'd pick up probably five or six that needle's not long enough to support five or six so I'll try four because these are big so there you are now you've got a string of beads there okay now you're going to put them down wherever you want them you might want to curl them or you might want them straight wherever you want them I'm going to have them at an angle here now making sure not to curl the fabric to tighten the fabric lay them down nicely like this you see they're nice and straight the fabric is straight underneath them and then take your needle in at the end of this bead so take the needle in at the end of the bead like this and then you're going to go back on yourself and between each bead where each bead meets and you can see the thread bring your needle up and then just cross over and back into the, fa the fabric there you go and then do it the same same here needle up I hope that's coming out on the screen needle up thread over the thread you can see between the beads and back down into your fabric and this is such an easy way of pull it this is such an easy way of sewing beads down there you go over the thread in the middle and down there you go now occasionally just occasionally I have gone right back through them but don't need to because we know they're quite secure 
straighten that up we know they're secure nice and firm they're not going anywhere are they and then you just tie it off here at the back nice knot it's really important that you tie these off properly securely at the back so they don't work loose there we are and that is how to put your beads on so i haven't got a beading needle now beading needles are specifically for beads i'm just using an ordinary little sharp needle it's quite fine i'm going to come start here i'll start there okay so coming through there it seems secure but i don't trust that so i'm going to over stitch that just to lock it knot it that now i know that's secure because i've knotted it and then i'm going to get my beads now when you're you're using beads put your beads in a lid something like this without the hole a tin lid piece of fabric i find it easy unfortunately you can't oh you can just about see these if you put them on something like a piece of felt they don't roll so with my needle i'm just going to pick up six there so if you can see that so there are six beads on that needle now can you see why i exaggerate when i demonstrate things that is why i exaggerate because if i did everything in its actual size the actual process you'd never see them I'm now going to take my needle in at the end of that row without pulling them, without tightening up the fabric. There's an awful lot of loose threads around here, that's better. There, so now they're lying down. And I'm going to do as I did in the demonstration, I'm now going back between the beads if I can between each bead and secure them secure them in place so that's one right I'm going to do that to the end all the way to the end now when I get to the end what I should do because I want that longer I think I've missed one there but imagine I've now gone to the end of that now what I will do once I come out do the last bead here I will then just bring my thread underneath the fabric and start that process again see no secret and just keep repeating that now if you want them more beads then it, you want to fill this gap in here then go back and just do this repeat it along there which I will do so that is the beading now I'm going to continue with my beading and see where it takes me and then fingers crossed again it will be finished and it'd be time to move on and construct construct the bag or the purse okay so i'll be back with you shortly so that is now finished so we went from that to the circles to this and i think there is a oh it's not on the screen i think there is a little bit of a similarity going on there even though i tried to move away from the naturalistic flowers to the geometric shapes but hey ho i'm quite pleased with that well in fact i'm very pleased with that now the next step is to cut it into the circle shape so all I'm going to do is turn that over and as you can see here this is the edge of the circle that we've been working with so we haven't shouldn't have any stitches that have gone over that circle there now we do need a seam allowance 
So I'm going to add an inch or two and a half centimetre seam allowance all the way round. Now at this stage it's quite difficult to gauge for me to gauge that without marking it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mark it from the circle, the edge of that circle there, just an inch all the way round like so. And then I should join them up. Now some of you might be able to do this just by, by looking at it. So that actually comes over there. It's just a, right, so now I've put marks all the way around and I'm just going to join the marks up from one to the other. And then that will be cut out. Right, there we go. And there we are. So this bit here can be trimmed off. I'm going to trim the overlapping bits of lace off all the way around here. So that is my next step. And then this side, I'm going to trim the calico back. It'll be the same size as, as the interfacing all the way around the edge. There, that's it. So that is now that one. And I have actually snipped it a little bit, but never mind. So I'm going to put this to one side now and then think about the backing fabric. Now I did sort out some fabric, but I don't think it's going to be suitable. So I will go away and find some more, uh, sorry, not backing fabric, but lining fabric because this needs to be lined. I need to cut out a piece. In fact, I thought I had done it. Here it is. Yes. Now this will be the front piece, call that the back piece, and this will be the piece that goes here, let me turn that round, we'll go there, I'm going to cut this shape out in that fabric, that's if there's enough, Just look at these staples there, can you see those staples there, I've got to carefully remove, that was because this was a little sample and it was stapled on to the manufacturer's names so that will be like a pocket shape for this to fold over now at this point I'm really not sure what size to make this pocket I have prepared the interfacing on the calico but I'm not sure I actually want it that big because I, I think I might like a bit more than that folded over um, I might even decide to do it that way, half and half, so that will be the same front and back. But I should play around with that and as soon as I decide, make a start, I'll get back to you. To make it up now into the purse or the bag, we need two circles, this size, the same size as that. So this is the front and this is now the lining. Now, from this, we're going to cut three half circles along here. So that is one, the background, the calico interfacing to give it strength, and then the lining. So I'm just going to pop these big ones to one side for a minute. So I'm going to start with the three half circles and we're going to sandwich them together. So the first thing we want to do is put the two linings, if you like, well the front and the lining together, right sides together, so one on top of the other, right side, oh if I turn that round you might see it better. So right sides together, like this, and then we're going to place the calico with the iron on interfacing on the top so here that way and then we're going to pin across the top to hold them together while we sew now if you feel more confident about tacking them so tack them together first so right the way across here making sure that they actually meet at the top here like I didn't then so make sure they they all meet and they're all on the edge 
they are just need three pins on that one and then I'm going to machine sew across here just trim off any excess here and that will make it easier to fold over and press so just press that along there I can see I haven't gone too straight there but hey ho it doesn't matter so I'm now going to go and press this over here make that nice and firm so that is how it's looking now nicely pressed along here nicely pressed so that is now finished for the time being so just going to pop that over there you could always top stitch along there if you wanted to to hold it down but this is so thick i don't really think it needs it right the next thing is to do is to take the large circles now we want the line inside we want the line inside up I'm going to take the pocket side the pocket here and we're going to place the line inside line inside to line inside like so and then line them up so if I turn that round again so I'm going to line these up line inside to line inside with the pocket there and then we're going to place the front of this onto the background so now you have a sandwich of lining pocket and front so I'm going to pin this all the way round if I can pick it up right pin this all the way round and I advise that you tack as well afterwards you don't have to but for those of you who are new to to sewing or this type of work you might find it easier if after you've pinned that you tack um, I'm actually not going to tack but if you feel the need to tack right the way round then um, you go for it it's what makes you feel comfortable oh some of these pins are just so bent, <laughs> so bent right so that's now pinned all the way round now you can hand sew hand sew this with a nice little back stitch or just run it round on the machine if you can see this is a bit of a repair job that is where I actually nicked the fabric as I was cutting trimming the the calico bag so I, I've just put some iron on violin there two lots just to firm it up so the next thing to do we're going to just mark a place we want about four inches maybe about four inches distance so that would be from about there to about there now I'm going to start sewing at this mark right the way around here but stop at that mark it's about a distance of four inches don't sew between these two marks you need to leave that unsewn for pulling the fabric in to the right side so I'm just now going to sew around here on oh, the sewing machine Now I've sewn all the way around here on the original line that I drew when I drew around the plate. This is the original line. So I've now sewn all the way around there. I'm going to remove the pins. Just take the pins out and then just carefully trim it. That's the gap there. So that is the gap. That I haven't sewn over now very very carefully trim I'm not sure if these scissors are going to be very good so we trim all the way around just trim this surplus off right a big moment has arrived 
going to now pull it in to the right side keep your fingers crossed it's always risky doing this on on the camera ah right there we go it needs a nice press around the edge right oh unfortunately that pocket bit is on the opening but that doesn't matter we can fold that in and sew across it so this is what we have at the moment and that bit there will be folded in and hand sewn that be over sewn so that will give you the bit there that we need and then that will come across like so and that will be your purse actually I quite like it like that as well that's that's nice effect so anyway first things first I'm going to go off now and I'm going to press it press it all the way around there and just carefully dig out or trim bits any bits that are sticking out I trim those back and carefully dig out any bits there that might be sticking in inside the seam so so far so good um, let me have a look if I stick it on there that's it so you can see how round it is and it's it's looking quite good I like it like that actually I just like that look that would be quite nice maybe it's stuffed as a cushion but I will carry on and I'll, I'll make it up into a purse so I should get back to you quite soon so we're now ready to over sew it and all I've done I tucked in the, the raw seam allowance I've tucked it inside and pinned it down trying to keep the round shape as I go now I'm going to over sew from there to there which was the gap so the needle of a nice fine needle not too thick not too long stick it there you can see it to go through all these layers of fabric I'm now using sewing thread this is machine a strong machine sewing thread I'm using that double I've knotted it and I've brought the knot I've put the knot in between the two joins there now I'm going to over sew that all the way around picking up a little piece from each side because you can't see what I'm doing I'm going back to the demonstration pieces this is over sewing for anybody who isn't quite sure so imagine it's the side of the pockets okay it's the two sides here the pockets and I've pinned them I've tucked the raw edges in and I've just put a few pins in to hold them now this shape on the pocket is round so it makes it just a little bit harder than this popped in as many pins as I need for this it's exaggerated so it's a thick thread thick needle now I bring the needle in and I lose it inside the I'm going to see if I can just sorry I'm just going to see if I can make that a bit bigger Ah, so I'm losing the knot inside the seam allowance see the big knot going to lose it in there don't want to see that ugly old thing now I've lost that inside the seam allowance and I'm just going to over sew now from one side to the other like this now on that very fine work that we're doing at the moment we need to keep our stitches small small and neat and close together they need to be close together makes it it makes the seam stronger and it also stops any pieces of fabric from the seam allowance from escaping between the holes we don't want that on our new purse so this is how it's very difficult doing this way because my arm is my wrist is um at an unusual angle so that 
is the seam allowance. I'm now going to do it really big so you can see. There we go. That's better. You'll see it better this way. So in from side to side, nice big stitches, which we've done before. And this is what you're going to do to close up the gap on your purse okay of course yours is going to be a lot neater than mine hopefully your wrist won't be bent double this is actually killing me so i'm going to finish it there take the pins out and there you can see the two pieces together okay so that is the next step and then we'll be thinking about the attack, the closure and a handle for it. So I'm just going to quickly get on with that and then go off and find a handle. And here it is, totally finished. Hallelujah. That's the back way, the back view. And this is the front view. Now, what I've done, I've managed to pull down the lining just so it provides a nice little edge here around the opening. Now the the um, closure here has been taken from a piece of jewellery, an old piece of jewellery. I'm going to undo it for you. So this, put it that way, this was the drop part of a necklace and that piece went round there and this piece of chain went round there well I thought that would make a very nice closure a very nice buttonhole loop if you like like a rouleau loop so I just took the chain off and was left with that really lovely loop there which I have sewn inside I've sewn it down with just a few uh, strong over sewing stitches either side now I will lift it up but I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that there are so over sewing stitches in four places at the beginning here here and at the end the same this side now I didn't really know what to use to close it with um, I looked at several things but came up with this little um, bracelet that I bought in a charity shop oh, about a year or more ago for something like 50p there that was on there as well and that fell off and I saw the green you see this beautiful green colour here and I thought that would go really nicely with the green on, the, on here just as the pink here matches the pink oops matches the pink on the bag you see that the, these pinks these colors here match lovely with the colors on here now I keep calling it a bag but as you as you've noticed it's actually a purse now so I took the bead away from the bracelet took it off and that one just fell off and I've sewn it there now it closes just lovely there you go quite secure it's tight it's just lovely so all I did was to, to secure what I'm calling the button loop was to find the center of the lap the flap here find the center and place each side of the loop either side of the center so the center of here is actually there so either side I secured the loop the stones so that is that um, I was going to put a strap on it but I decided not I found these as well I have a, a drum a small drum so high full of broken pieces of jewelry that mostly my daughter and I have saved from the the charity shops now for those of you who would want um, about to make a bag of it perhaps an evening purse you could there's many things you could do you could loop that round there or you could even just over sew the ends of something like this maybe not so long here on the edge and then you have a wrist strap 
now that's entirely up to you that's entirely personal I don't want that on mine however I did find this and I did wonder about this another chain rolled gold but it's quite strong and that's very pretty I did wonder about maybe attaching that at one side just so it drooped down and then I thought no it might actually start making the whole thing look tacky and I think this is just enough it's just enough so there you are that is finished completed now what I'm doing with mine I'm going to use it as a little travel a travel pack I think I've explained before um, my daughter and I do quite a bit of traveling over Europe and it's always nice to have something pretty to have your sewing things in and this is the sort of thing I'm going to carry in mind oh look <laughs> that's coffee that's okay I can use that little piece of Ada an assortment of sewing needles tacking thread just for the edges knee um nice sewing knee uh oh, scissors excuse me it's been a long day scissors and some th threads and there will be a pattern in there at some point so that is what i'm doing with mine it didn't start off this way however it did start off as quite a nice little evening purse it's up to you now and I'd be very interested to know how you get on with yours. So, a little recap in teaching terms. We went from the magazine, and I've taken the name of the nursery off it, away from it. So we went from the magazine to picture, doubled the picture. That's two of those. Um, let me see. Two of those, and then join to make quite a nice picture like this although you could if you wanted to photocopy it and cut it up and arrange that as you wish to so from basic magazine nice coffee time read to oh that looks nice I'm going to use that to playing around with it this to that and that is what we call a progression of an idea I think you've all got that now haven't you so if you did like this please give it the thumbs up that's a big tatty thumb I'm ashamed of the nail varnish so I apologize but that is the chlorine in the water in the the pool that's doing that not my pool the council pool so um and it's very strong they've actually doubled up the amount of chlorine apparently because of the covid so if you do like it nice thumbs up for me please if you don't mind if you don't like it just switch off <laughs> okay take care everyone and i'll get back very shortly with something else okay take care now keep safe